So sometimes decluttering can feel very hard. Like I think a huge problem can be decision fatigue. And different people declutter for different reasons, right? So sometimes people are going through like a really stressful time and they will like declutter is like a way to alleviate like some of the pressure. It's like, well, I can't control this part of my life, but I can control the stuff I have. So I'll declutter and let go of things. Or it may not even be your stuff. It may be like someone's left stuff at your house. Someone has passed away. The sentimental stuff's really difficult. Um, expensive things are really difficult. Handmade items can also be really difficult. So what sort of made me think about this was my son made his bed today and I looked at his bed and I was like, hey Levi, how come your quilt is on the bed upside down? And he's like, I don't really like the orange. And I was like, the orange? And I'd made this quilt for him a few years ago now. And he's like, yeah, don't you remember? It's um, black, white and orange. I don't like the orange. And the back of the quilt is like basically black and white. Now, I'm not one of those people that say, once I give you the gift, you have to keep it forever. And I first learned that, like when I started decluttering, it was 2014. I was having a very big like crisis. I had a lot of little kids and I felt that I was primarily parenting them with no help. I mean, I have a husband. My husband is very helpful, but Ben has always worked full time out of the house and he was a shift worker. And it's just like one day I just had this epiphany. I'm overwhelmed and we have too much stuff. And when the kids are young, it was very easy to declutter because you could just get rid of every toy that was very noisy and annoying or lots of like pieces and stuff like that or anything that the kids just would sort of dump on the ground and walk away from it was easy to declutter because little kids well at least in my experience don't they didn't care but then people get older and they start you know taking ownership of their own things and it's more difficult for them to let go of stuff. Um, so it's really easy if the stuff is ruined. So it broke, was damaged in some way. And it's funny because what made me think of talking to you guys about this is the fact that I have this quilt here that has a lot of holes in it from uh, someone that is no longer with us. So a bunny bit holes in this quilt. Does that mean I'm going to throw away the entire quilt? No. But finally today it was nice and sunny and I washed this quilt and I am now finally repairing the holes in it as best as I can little memories of the bunny that we no longer have. <laughs> I'm not just gonna throw the whole quilt away. I'm gonna put an effort to repairing it. And obviously you try to model looking after things and sometimes accidents happen and things get wrecked. But sometimes you also have stuff that there's nothing wrong with it. You might even still really like it, like a lot. It might be cool, but if it's too much stuff, it's too much stuff. So I'm only talking about this because this is all the, the experiences that I have had is that sometimes too much stuff is too much stuff, but I'm 
trying to declutter in a healthy way, like slowly decluttering things thoughtfully means hopefully I won't have any like decluttering regrets. Like, oh, I shouldn't have thrown away those 15 walks that I had my face engraved in. Oh, I shouldn't have gotten rid of those extra 17 pairs of shoes because I woke up this morning and I had 17 extra feet. Now I don't have the shoes. And like very much like largely, I would say I try to be careful with what I bring into the house. Traditionally, Christmas and like birthdays and stuff have been difficult for me, especially if like people other than me and my husband like ask for like present ideas for the kids. I'm sort of filled with this whole, <sighs> I have had to arrange the birthdays, the Christmas, the everything, it all falls on me. And then to try to make decisions of more stuff, it, it can just feel like a lot. <laughs> so today's task, while the baby is sleeping, I decided to do some small repairs, smallish bunny eaten holes. And to just sort of say that, it's like sometimes decluttering is difficult. The, the space between realizing you have too much stuff and then making the decisions as to what stuff to get rid of can be very challenging. And my decluttering muscles are very strong because back in 2014, I decluttered no less than seven van loads of stuff before it even looked like a small dent was made in the house. And now it's 2024 and there's more stuff to let, let go of pair down and look at my scissors and like quite a few of my children will just declutter on their own like um three of my children in particular they keep like a pr pretty good stock levels of their stuff and we're not totally out of control we're a little bit out of control. You can't do it all in one day either. It's a whole process. So I did another video where I spoke about decluttering a cot and I put it up in my buy nothing group and just was like, thank you cot, goodbye. Don't want to see you again. And it feels good. There's other like random things that I'm just really hoping that either someone on my buy nothing group will want it or that I can donate it to savers and that someone will get use of it. And that I can step into the holiday period not being uh, not feeling stretched too far, not feeling stressed, enjoying the peaceful time with my family without all this extra stuff in the house. So solidarity to other mothers out there that you're feeling a bit like we have too much stuff and we need need to let go of some of it. It can be a lot, like it really can be. You could be dealing with like a lot of emotions and your emotions and feelings are valid. But at the end of the day, we have to decide and then do. Decide to get rid of it, get rid of it, and then stop the flow of stuff into the house. That's a real challenge. 
So I am going to actually have to do some shopping soonish because we're heading into the warmer weather and I like to keep about three to four dresses for each girl. The girls who wear dresses like all the time, they'll get four dresses for sure. And they won't also be getting like four pants and four, you know, that's kind of how I control things a bit, sort of set amounts. Some of my boys literally never wear pants. So what's the point in filling their drawers with 50 pairs of pants? Give them some extra pairs of shorts. What do the little kids have? One pair of good shoes, one pair of running shoes, and one pair of sandals. But they might also get a pair of thongs or flip-flops as well. That's it. They do have gum boots. They're stored on the veranda with everybody else's. And it's kind of like use it or lose it situation. Use it or lose it. And I like, you know, repairing and mending things to prolong their life. And I don't want to keep decluttering forever. Like, I pr there probably will have to be an element of that as kids grow too big for things. You let go of clothes that are too small. But yeah, it's... Every time I declutter, it makes me want to buy nothing ever again for the rest of my life. And then I realize I'm a human and I'm probably gonna buy stuff that I end up not keeping forever. And after repairing this blanket, I know I don't wanna get bunnies ever again. <laughs> Cause bunnies are high maintenance and they ruin stuff. They're very cute, a thousand percent cute and adorable, but they wreck stuff. Decluttering and doing like an inventory and like mending things and as I travel along the streets of the housework, it's a good time for me to think about like kind of what are the things I want to do? And how am I going to achieve them? And I'm trying really hard to be like peaceful about it and not hard on myself and like force myself to move super quickly and like achieve everything yesterday, just little by little, getting to the, the goals that I've set for myself. It takes deliberate thought and action. So that's what I'm doing. I'm thinking carefully about why I do what I do and do I want to keep doing it or not. And not worrying about stuff. Not being just like motivated because you're super overwhelmed it's like putting things in place so that you don't get overwhelmed anymore not rushing around and trying to do things super quickly slowing down can be very difficult and seem very hard but it's possible if i can slow down and have 11 children then anyone can right but i also have to remember that like when i only had four children in many ways i it was just totally different time i could manage like so many more things so if i watch some other youtuber that's you know getting showered with praise of how much of a perfect mother she is and everything that she does and she has four kids there's no point in me sitting there and going I'm pathetic why am I not 
doing everything. I have 11 kids. And with my large family, I have just learned, and my family would agree with this, the number one thing my family wants from me is for me to be happy and loving and not stressed out of my mind. And yeah, I was a bad girl. <laughs> In the past, being so stressed, I'm like, it's not worth it. It's not worth it at all. I'm also trying to not jump too far ahead and try to think of all these other areas I can declutter and empty out and get rid of stuff because then it's just too much. So I've decluttered some things, I'm repairing some things, and that's pretty good if I do say so myself. <laughs> Just when I think that I've done all the holes in the quilt, I find even more like massive holes. Like that one's huge. 